In the last video, we talked about how the ions and ionic compounds do not stay together when dissolved in water. Rather, they split up into the ions they are made up of. We'll dive a little bit deeper here. Let's first talk about water. Water is a covalently bonded compound that consists of one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. As we know, oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. This means that in a bond between an oxygen and a hydrogen atom, we expect that the bond will be asymmetric and that the electron cloud will be more dense near the oxygen atom than near the hydrogen atom. As a result, although the molecule as a whole remains neutral, the oxygen atom will have a partially negative charge and the two hydrogen atoms will have partially positive charges. If we were to dissolve solid sodium chloride in water, which of the following will the partially positively charged hydrogen atoms be attracted to? The partially positively charged hydrogen atoms in water will be attracted to the negatively charged chloride ions. Similarly, the partially negatively charged oxygen atom in water will be attracted to the positively charged sodium ion. We see again that opposite charges and partial charges attract. Let's now discuss exactly how this property of water comes into play to dissolve ionic compounds. When we place solid sodium chloride in water, the arranged network that it exists in will remain until water breaks it up. Hydrogen will be attracted to chloride and oxygen will be attracted to sodium. As more water molecules are attracted to either the sodium or chloride ions, depending on the water molecule's orientation, the magnitude of water ion attraction increases and the strength of ion-ion attraction is reduced. Therefore, the ions are pulled away from each other, and as they are, water continues to be attracted to them until the ions are completely surrounded by water molecules. Eventually, each ion that made up the solid ionic compound will be surrounded by water molecules, and they will be evenly distributed in solution. This is true for any ionic compound that dissolves in water. Now we'll compare what we've just learned about ionic compounds to molecular compounds, molecules held together by sigma and pi bonds. Let's take iodine as an example of a molecular compound. The two iodine atoms are held together by a sigma bond. What do you predict will happen when we dissolve iodine in water? When iodine, or any molecular compound, is dissolved in water, it will remain intact and will be evenly distributed throughout the solution. Breaking apart the sigma and pi bonds that hold together atoms in molecular compounds requires a lot of energy and so these compounds dissolve intact. Water molecules will be all around the iodine molecules, but they won't interact with them in the same way as they would with ionic compounds. Now let's classify one more chemical species involved in reactions. Polyatomic ions, such as NO3-, which is also known as nitrate, are held together by covalent bonds but are also charged species. Because they are charged, they are able to interact with ions to form ionic compounds. For example, nitrate can interact with a potassium ion to form potassium nitrate. What do you predict will be the result if we were to dissolve solid potassium nitrate in water? Because we've already said that polyatomic ions interact with ions to form ionic compounds, Potassium nitrate, an ionic compound, will break up into ions when dissolved. Potassium is the cation, and the anion is nitrate as a whole. Nitrate will not break up further because these atoms are held together by covalent, sigma and pi, bonds, and we've just learned that covalent compounds stay together even when dissolved in water. So, we always consider polyatomic ions a charged unit that can form ionic compounds with other ions. One last example before we conclude, lactic acid. Notice that there is a covalent bond between the hydrogen and one of the oxygen atoms. Pure lactic acid is a solid at room temperature. Which of the following is the correct equation for dissolving lactic acid in water? Dissolving this molecular compound will result in aqueous lactic acid. This compound won't break up in the same way that we've discussed after it dissolves. What happens after it dissolves is the topic of another video on acids and bases.